What's going on guys, Jamie here. Now, we've all been there on a match day, excited to get the game going, but not really feeling much love for the warm up. I'll do it later, or it's not important because I'm on the bench. Not good enough guys. of the hamstrings and bending over to touch your toes is just not going to cut it. You put yourself at risk of an injury and ultimately let your teammates down if you have to be carried off and sidelined for a few games due to a half-baked warm-up. First up, and before we start stretching, we need to get the blood flowing. This can be achieved for a gentle jog, starting from the touchline and heading in towards the 18-yard box and back. and repeating that about four or five times, working at probably around 50%, not to overexert yourself. In addition to our jogging, we can start to open up some of those muscle groups that we're about to stretch. A nice simple one to start off with is side to side. So, just like this, making sure that we're not crossing our feet over, we're coming in just before our feet touch and opening them back out, up to the 18 yard box and back out. Another good pulse raiser is snapping the heels up at the back. This will prepare our quads ready for the stretch. The most important reason for doing a warm up is to avoid injuries during a match. Keeping the muscles warm will prevent injuries such as a hamstring strain and allow the body to prepare safely and steadily. The warm-up should gently prepare the body for action by gradually increasing the heart rate and circulation. This will loosen the joints and increase the blood flow to the muscles. If you're one of those players that doesn't take warm-up seriously or has arrived just a couple of minutes before kickoff, here are a few stretches that you can use to prevent injury and prepare your body for match action. Right, the first thing we need to consider is our ankles. Loosen up the joints that are probably going to see the most amount of action during a game. To do this, we want to start with our feet about hip width apart. Shift your weight, so I'm going to do my left ankle first. Shift your weight onto your right leg, up onto your toes with your left, and just roll the ankle nice and gently, five times one way, and then five times back the other way. Ankle injuries are very common amongst pro footballers. Look at the Premier League this season. Harry Kane suffered multiple times with ankle injuries. Really loosen up those joints allows a little bit extra flexibility so when you're tackling or when you're landing, a little bit more protection and hopefully prevents injury. The first main muscle group that we want to stretch is our calves. This is the muscle at the back of the lower leg. We've got a couple of variations how to do this stretch so I'm going to talk you through both. Firstly, we're going to do it stood up. So we want to start with our feet about shoulder width apart. Then one leg, so if we start with our left leg, takes a step back, about one step, one normal step. Drive the heel towards the ground, the back foot, keeping our foot, both feet facing forwards, our knees in line, facing over with this knee over the front foot. We drive the heel then, the back leg, towards the ground, keeping our body nice and upright, nice soft knees, and hold that for about 10 seconds. Then repeat on the other leg, one step back, and you should feel that stretch at the back of the calf. Our next variation, if you can't really feel that stretch, is to do it on the ground. This way you get a little bit more of a stretch for those that can't feel it. So, down on the ground with our hands about shoulder width apart, both feet back, with a slight arch in the back. So if we're going to stretch our left leg first, the right leg comes over the left leg and we drive our left heel towards the floor. Should then really feel that stretch up the back of the calf. Once you've held that for about 10 seconds, swap over, so feet shoulder width apart again, left leg onto the right leg, drive the heel towards the ground, holding it again for about 10 seconds. Next up is our hamstring. This is probably the most common muscle group that gets injured amongst footballers. So the importance on stretching these muscles is massive. So to stretch these, what we want to do is start with our feet about half a hip distance apart. One step goes forward. So if we're going to stretch our left leg first, the left leg steps forward about half a step. We then bend backwards, putting our weight for our bum with our top of our legs staying parallel, both feet facing forwards. We then put our weight through our standing foot, our back foot, and straighten the front leg until we feel a stretch at the back of the top of the leg. Keeping both our feet facing forward and holding that stretch for about 10 seconds. If you want to put your hands on your standing leg, make sure you do that 
don't put any weight with your hands through the leg that we're stretching. So sit into that until we feel the stretch, hold it for around 10 seconds and then swap over. If you can't feel that stretch, another variation to do with that is to lift our toes slightly, so exactly the same. Half a step forward, half a hip distance apart, sit into it, keeping the top of our legs parallel and we can pull the toe up. So keeping our legs straight, pull the toe up towards us and then you should feel an added stretch at the back of the leg. Right, quads, the big muscle at the front of your leg. For this one, it's probably easier to find something to hold on to to help with your balance. So, once we've found something to hold, what we want to do is start with our feet about hips width apart again. If we're stretching our left leg first, the left leg comes up, the heel comes back, and we grab it, grabbing in the crease of the ankle there. Making sure that our legs are parallel, so the top of our legs are parallel, and they're about two inches apart. When we hold that, Hold the ankle here and drive the hips forward, then you should feel that stretch in the front of the leg. Hold that for about 10 seconds, and once you've done that, swap sides and do the other leg. The last of our lower body stretches is our glutes, the big muscle, our bumps. So, for this one, we want to start with our feet about hip distance apart with our knees at about a right angle there, so a 90 degree angle there. If we're going to start with stretching our right leg, we want to lift the right leg over onto the left knee, putting just above our ankle on the top of the knee here. We then shift our weight forward, keeping our hands where they are, shift our bums forwards, and you should start to feel that stretch here in the back of the bum. So again, so starting here, leg up to here, shift our weight forwards and hold it there. If you still can't feel that stretch, you can shift your hands forward a bit, come off the ground and really drive the hips forward nice and deep. For the prima donnas out there that might not want to sit on the ground and get muddy, we could find something to hold on to, a partner, a post, or a fence again. Hold here, again, feet about hip distance apart. If we're going to stretch our right glute first, right leg comes up, same position onto the knee, and we sit into it here. Using our hand for balance, sit into it, and you'll feel the stretch in your bum. Another thing we need to think about is mobilising our backs. Our backs are involved in almost every single movement we do, whether that's running, jumping, tackling, our backs are always involved. So mobilizing them is really important. So there's a few different ways this can be done. Probably the most basic is this. So again, start with our feet about hip distance apart, nice soft knees and both legs facing forward. Keeping our chest out, our body upright, put our hands out towards the front and just add a twist until you feel a slight stretch in the back. We don't want to overdo it again because that can cause ourselves more problems than it's worth. Another movement we can do for this and it adds a little bit more of a stretch on the hamstrings as well as the back is the same thing but going down. So again, our feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart this time. So hip distance, half a step out and we can go down and touch our toes just like this. And that will mobilize the back as well as stretching the hamstrings. Now, finally, I cannot stress enough the importance of a good warm-up. You've only got yourself to blame if you end up getting injured during a match. As a team, you rely on each other, and that needs everyone working together. So individual preparation is of the highest priority. An injury can ruin your game, your week, or even your whole season. So you need to give yourself the best opportunity of avoiding that. Play safe out there and I'll see you next time.